It is December 2100 in Jersey City. Instead of a white Christmas this year, the forecast is four, eight degrees warmer than it is today. So you're thinking of throwing a tropical-themed holiday party instead. And when you look out across the Hudson to New York City, the water seems a bit closer, a bit higher than you remember. That's because it's risen three, maybe six feet. Now that's okay on a calm December afternoon like this one, but once the storms roll in every few years, the entire city is flooded, costing billions of dollars of infrastructure damage, taking homes and lives, not lives in far away New Orleans, but lives in your own neighborhood. For you, climate change has become an everyday natural disaster. So the time has come to decide. Do you stay or do you go? In the spirit of democracy that has somehow endured throughout this crisis, the City Council of Jersey City has called this decision to a vote for you, for all of us to decide together. Do we as a city protect in place, build seawalls and a levee system to hopefully stem the tide for a few more years? Or do we go? accept the inevitable, stop pouring money into the ocean, and pick up all 250,000 of us, relocate us further inland to escape the rising tides. So let's vote. All in favor of protecting in place. All in favor of relocating. It is August 16th, 2016, and the American citizens in Shishmaref, Alaska, don't get another 80 years for this vote. It's already happened. In a 94 to 78 decision, the residents here decided to relocate their lives, their livelihoods, their homes, to escape some of the most dramatic of climate change we have seen to date. Climate Shishmaref is located here, on a barrier island just five miles off the coast of mainland Alaska. 600 Inupiat residents have lived a subsistence-based lifestyle of hunting and berry picking at this site for over 400 years. Now, just like we occasionally have hurricanes here on the East Coast, erosion in Shishmaref is nothing new. They've seen their land loss over the centuries to the sea. But just as the hurricanes here are getting more intense, like the erosion there is getting worse too. That's because climate change is happening twice as fast in Shishmaref as it is anywhere else on the planet. That means that the air and ocean temperatures there are warming twice as fast as they are here in New Jersey today. All of that heat is melting ice at an unprecedented rate. Now, in normal years, ice pack forms around the island so that when storms come in, the waves break miles out and not on people's homes. But with warmer waters, that ice is no longer forming. And with no ice, there's no natural barrier to protect the island from those storms. Now, each year, Shishmaref sees three to five feet of its land being lost to the sea, with a single storm taking up to 50 feet of land. The island is only a quarter of a mile wide. They have tried to build man-made defenses like their current seawall, but it's projected that the Chukchi Sea will, as it always has, reclaim whatever defenses the village puts up. Too often, climate change is painted as some distant and abstract threat. It's the polar bear in the Arctic that's disappearing in ice. It's the island in the Pacific that has to move because that island won't be there in a few years. It doesn't have any immediate connection to us as Americans because climate change is a story that happens somewhere else. For us, it's that story we read in the New York Times or the joke we make on Thanksgiving that we can throw a football in t-shirts. It's a concern, at least for the 70% of us that believe in it, but it's a distant concern at that. But I'm here to tell you that climate change is an American story. Climate change is disrupting lives across our country. 
It's a story that's about you and me. It's a story we should all know beyond the charts and headlines because we all have a part to play in adapting America to our new, warmer reality. Over the past year, I've been traveling around the United States and US territories as a National Geographic explorer to refocus America's climate change story on the people that are living on our eroding edges. The project, America's Eroding Edges, is partnered with the National Trust for Historic Preservation and funded by National Geographic Science and Exploration Committee. Together with my research partner, we're creating a database of hundreds of interviews to understand how climate change is affecting American communities and what we could do to help places like Shishmaref that need to adapt and relocate today. What I'm told in those interviews might surprise you because yes, people talk about how climate change is affecting their property and their homes, but they move quickly past that to instead talk about how climate change is affecting their cultures, their traditions, their languages, their identities. So let's stop and think about that for a moment, that climate change is a story about how environmental shifts are affecting who we are as Americans. Because I can stand up here and show you just how much ice we've lost in the Arctic and how that's affecting communities that once subsistent on walruses that haven't caught one in years. To which the response might be, that's devastating and it's heartbreaking, but it's not my story. It, it doesn't affect my everyday. So instead, I'm going to ask you to think about who you are and more specifically, I want you to think about a place that has defined who you are as a person. Maybe it's your hometown or where your grandparents live, but somewhere where the experiences and people have come to define who you are today. For me, I'm thinking of a Jersey Shore town, Belmar. It's where my family has had a house since before I was born. It's where my parents met on 13th Street. It's where I learned to surf, where I fell in love with the water, and where my cousin's kids are now getting their first mouthfuls of Jersey Shore water. Disgusting, I know. But that place is important to me because the people who live there are people who have loved and cared for me my entire life. Does everyone have their Belmar? Now, I want you to erase that place. It no longer exists. Not only can you not go back there, but you can't bring that significant other that you met in college to get that ice cream cone you got as a kid. You can't share anything there with your kids or your grandkids. It's gone, and not only is that place gone, but those people, that community that cared for you, is also gone. Those people are dispersed throughout our country. How's everyone feeling? If you're like me, you're not feeling so great right about now, but maybe we're starting to think a bit differently about climate change. Too often, we as Americans forget how much places in our lives define who we are. We're mobile. We go off to college or go to the city for a new job. And that mobility is a good thing. It exposes us to new ideas and new people that help us adapt to the changes in our lives. But throughout all of those changes, we know that the places we hold most dear will always be there intact for us to go back to. That will not always be the case. There will come a time in the not so distant future where those places, those people will be affected by climate change past the point of saving. If I've learned anything from my travels across America for this project, it is that climate change is not just about losing homes and buildings. It's about the potential of losing the very things 
that make us who we are. Cultural loss may not be the first thing that comes to mind when a storm hits. The most immediate losses of climate change are the ones we can see. It's the house that gets blown away by the storm. It's the subways that get filled when it floods. It's the roller coaster that gets washed out to sea in the hurricane. But there are some things that can't get built back, like the garden where your grandfather taught you how to grow tomatoes in that's now too salty to grow anything, or the close-knit bonds on your street that let you ask your neighbor to water your plants while you're away or pick up your kids after school when you're too busy. Those things, those local relationships, cultures, and traditions, that's what people talk about when asked what's at stake when seas are encroaching on American communities. That concern that you're going to lose your identity when you move, you just know that things are going to change, is a sentiment that I have heard throughout America's shorelines. I've heard it in the Chesapeake Bay on a, t a community on Tangier Island who's afraid of losing a dialect that has been around since before this country was founded once the island becomes uninhabitable. I've heard it in American Samoa where people are watching the places they once played as children now be five feet out into the ocean. These places are part of a much wider problem. In America today, at least 10 communities are in the process or are seeking funds to relocate because of climate change. Shishmaref is just one of 31 villages in Alaska that are of an immediate danger of being uninhabitable because of sea level rise. These communities may be the first to relocate because of climate change in America, but they will not be the last. By the end of this century, at least 400 towns, cities, and villages will be underwater no matter how much we reduce our greenhouse gas emissions, including where we stand today. That equates to 4.3 million Americans displaced by climate change by the end of this century. And that's on the low end of NASA sea level rise predictions. On the high end, 13 million Americans will embark on a great migration inland, leaving not just their homes behind, but those local historic sites, those family traditions, the cultures that make us who we are. That mass cultural loss may not seem as important as the billions of dollars of infrastructure damage climate change will cause, but just like biodiversity in our ecosystems makes them more resilient to changes, our cultural diversity helps us adapt to the changes in the world around us. Those lessons of Fred passing down to his children of walrus hunting, that lesson that my grandfather passed to me about planting tomatoes, helps us live in the world around us. When we lose those places, we don't just lose those experiences and personal connections, we lose part of our ability to adapt to the world as it changes in the future. At the beginning of this talk, I said that climate change was an American story, one that we should all know beyond the headlines and graphs because we all have a part to play in it. And I meant that. We all have a part to play in America's climate change story, now more so than ever before. Next month, Donald Trump, an outspoken climate change denier, will become the next president of the United States. The Environmental Protection Agency, the very institution that was established to protect the natural landscapes that have defined Americans for centuries, is being transitioned by a man who has made a career out of promoting climate change skepticism among the American public. This is not good news, not just for our planet, but for the thousands of Americans that are already being impacted by climate change. There is a silver lining to America's climate change story, though. Now, more than ever before, Americans identify climate change as a threat to our country. Your role? To keep that number going up. 
So here's my call to action. Go out there and change America's climate change story. Make it not about the graphs. Make it about you. Make it about me. Go to your neighbors. Don't talk to them about what you read in the New York Times, but talk to them about how climate change is going to affect your own community, your own street. Talk to your family, maybe even those family members that might not believe in climate change yet, and talk to them about how environmental shifts will affect those family traditions that you've been passing down for generations. And perhaps most importantly of all, engage with your town or your city and talk to them about how climate change is going to impact your hometown. Because while the federal government may not act on climate change in the next four years, your city and your town will. And those, less, those actions are all the more important. Go online and see if your town has a climate plan. And if it doesn't, get in touch with the mayor's office and ask why it doesn't. So go out there and change America's climate change story to be about people because at the end of the day, climate change isn't about the polar bear on the iceberg. It's not about the island in the Pacific. Climate change is about you and me. It's about how it will impact you. It's about how it's impacting my family in Belmar, about how it's impacting Fred in Alaska. We all have a part to play in it and the world is moving too fast for any one of you not to engage in this dialogue and help make America a more adaptive place in a warmer world. Thank you.